communities like I've known them in my whole life are extinct in the 21st century. No longer are communities physical spaces with, you know, actual human beings traveling, walking through, saying hello, greeting each other, checking in on each other, knowing your neighbor, right? They have transitioned to these online communities, which are literally virtual. That means you can't touch them. You don't know who your neighbor is. You are communicating with avatars, which is just a still image, right? And the disturbing truth is this generation of young people weren't privileged to those communities that I know it or some of you are familiar with because you grew up in them. In fact, this generation is stripped of the opportunity to grow up in a community, you know, and they've been handed a virtual one instead. One they can't touch. One they can't feel. One that they often can't really see in front of them, not on the screen, but physically in front of them and, and what those members of that community look like. One that they cannot smell. They can't taste the creations, right? The soup that these communities make. And they can't hear the true voices of that community. This is a problem. This is a major problem. And if you don't think it's a problem, feel free to make sure you share your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear a different perspective than the one I just shared. And while we're here, please make sure you subscribe, like, give a thumbs up, uh, follow the show if you're listening to it on Podbean or any other platform that you listen to your podcasts on. And I would love it if you actually engage, share with family members, right? Intrigue somebody else with this conversation. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit the bell so you'll be notified on any uh, new episodes that drop, right? It's 2023. It doesn't cost you anything. I just need your support to grow this channel and this show so that we can reach more ears that are willing to listen and are going to benefit from it so we can mold our future together, okay? So let's get back into it. Um, I'm going to use this episode to share with this generation as well as the old and the future what it takes to establish a community that works, right? Similar to the ones in the past. They worked. Communities in the past worked. Otherwise, you and I wouldn't be here having this conversation, right? Because if they had failed me, I wouldn't be here. If they had failed you, you wouldn't be here listening. Okay, so there are some benefits, but I want to share with you what I think is going to help establish a healthy community. Right now, in order to establish a healthy community, what's required of us is effort. Every member in there needs to give it effort, a good amount of effort. Um, we also need a commitment from the individuals within that community. The organizations, the entrepreneurs, whether small or large organizations, the nonprofits, every organization, right? We need a commitment from them as well as local governments. I know, I know, I'm not trying to get political, but this is a fact. And when I say local governments, that means policing and every other agency that's connected to the government, social services and all of that stuff. But ultimately, our MPs, right? Um, we need to know who they are and establish a rapport with them. I believe I spoke about this um, very, very early on in the show about, um, you know, economics and, and poweronomics, right? So you can check those episodes out uh, and just kind of get a concept, a context to what it is I'm alluding to when I say local governments, there are steps that we can take to accomplish this outcome, okay? So let's get into that. 